Good evening. Welcome to the February 16th edition of the Donners Grove Village Council meeting. We are once again in council chambers tonight and feeling good about being here. We do have some public seating, but please remain mindful of total person limits and IDPH best practice guidance. If you're in attendance, please continue to wear your mask and watch your distance. Commissioner Earl is attending via phone and we're welcoming Commissioner Colavani back by phone. That's some of the best news we've had in a while and I think it's probably going to make all us smile if you could see us beneath our masks. As usual, we will begin with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, I pledge allegiance, allegiance to the flag of the United States, States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice, and justice for all. Rosa, would you please call the roll? Yes. Mayor Barnett? Here. Commissioner Jose? Here. Commissioner Earl? Here. Commissioner Wallace? Here. Commissioner Sadowski Fugit? Here. Commissioner Colvaney? Here. Commissioner Gray? Here. Sorry about that. Got excited about Rich being on the phone. <laughs> Uh, is there a motion to conduct this meeting electronically? Mayor, I move that the council conduct the February 16th, 2021 Village Council meeting electronically. Second. Rosa, please call the roll. Commissioner Jose? Aye. Commissioner Wallace? Aye. Commissioner Gray? Aye. Commissioner Colavani? Aye. Commissioner Sadowski Fugit? Aye. Commissioner Earl? Aye. Mayor Barnett. Aye. Is there a motion concerning minutes of previous council meetings? Mayor, I move that the council adopt the meeting minutes of the February 2nd, 2021 meeting as presented. Second. Any council questions or comments? Hearing none, Rosa, please call the roll. Commissioner Jose? Aye. Commissioner Wallace? Aye. Commissioner Gray? Aye. Commissioner Colavani? Aye. Commissioner Sadowski Fugit? Aye. Commissioner Earl? Aye. Mayor Barnett? Aye. That passes unanimously. Item four on our agenda tonight is the annual report. The annual report is a um, tradition here in the village of Downers Grove. It is something that we take a little time to do to look back at years past, look at the successes in the years past and, and reflect a little bit on the good work that's been done. Tonight's report will be uh, a little shorter in the past. It might be a little bit different format, uh, but we're looking forward to it. And if you'll give me one second, it'll actually be up on my computer, bear with me. Doug, you ready? Awesome. Good evening again. We're glad you're with us tonight. Uh, I'm glad all to be here and Commissioner Earl and Commissioner Colavani in particular. Glad you guys made it as well. This presentation of the 2020 annual report is part of our longstanding tradition in Downers Grove designed to highlight the achievements of the past year. We've all experienced significant challenges in 2020 and I know we're all excited to move forward in 2021 and beyond. You may recall that 2019 saw your village council dedicate a lot of time and effort to village facilities. As a group, we were as determined as ever to make progress, and on March 10th, we discussed our facilities planning yet again. This time, we appeared to have a united council moving forward on an ambitious project which would improve and serve our community for a long time to come in an innovative and environmentally and fiscally responsible way. March, however, took a sharp turn and ended with COVID hitting home and changing things for all of us. So as a new year begins, this is our opportunity to touch on the achievements and results that positively affected our community in 2020. It's a worthwhile endeavor to reflect on the good work which was done that benefits us all. And in those positive moments lie keys to making future efforts successful. This good work we'll touch on this evening was made possible by dedicated efforts of a significant team comprised of the Village Council, staff, stakeholder partnerships, volunteer board and commission members, and you, Downers Grove residents. Again and again, we've seen our best comes when we work together, and 2020, despite COVID, proved this to be the truth once again. 
Early in the pandemic, a Stay Home, Save Lives campaign was launched as the village worked with the DuPage County Health Department, Illinois Department of Public Health, and the CDC to encourage best practices to minimize the spread of COVID. Around the same time, village council members created a series of short videos encouraging residents to follow the state's guidance. Throughout the pandemic, the village has had our own Pierce Downer promoting the wearing of masks through our Wear In This Together messaging. And in July, the village kicked off a Show You Know the Three W's poster contest to raise awareness and remind us all of the importance of personal decisions to reduce the spread of COVID. As the pandemic continues, those personal choices remain important. And I want to again offer a special thank you to the families who made posters to help remind us all of good choices. Like residents and businesses, nearly every step the village took last year was one that included uncertain adjustments and everyone on your village team remained committed to service delivery despite the many challenges. We quickly expanded our remote and contactless services, making it easier and safer for both residents and staff to access village service. Online opportunities to make payments and submit plans were enhanced. Most types of inspections were conducted remotely using video conferencing and the village offered a or launched a fire safety inspection program. Modifications were made to temporary use permit reviews to allow for efforts in compliance with the governor's orders. Adjustments were also made to school crossing guard operations to meet the modified schedules of our local schools. Unplanned change can be tough, but Donners Grove took 2020 as an opportunity and many of the innovations demanded by COVID may end up serving us well for time to come. No segment of the economy was hit harder than hospitality and hospitality is a big part of our local economy. Hotels and restaurants in particular felt the brunt of the effects of social distancing. Your village worked with local restaurants to find ways to safely comply with the Restore Illinois plan, including increased use of public spaces, temporary signage allowances, fee-free permitting, and expanded downtown 15 minute parking spaces to help facilitate the all important curbside delivery demands of restaurants and retail alike. In addition, liquor license regulations were modified to allow restaurants to sell drinks along with pickup meals. And together with our partners at the Downers Grove Economic Development Corporation, we launched the Take Home for the Holidays campaign on Facebook, which proved to be a successful effort as we raised awareness of the importance of not dining in while also encouraging restaurants to residents to patronize our local restaurants through takeout orders. COVID or no COVID, the importance of fire prevention and safety remains a top priority. In 2020, the village observed fire prevention week virtually with a series of seven information packed videos. And while it's always more fun to get together with friends, learn some things about fire safety and see our gear live, these videos extended that opportunity for residents and their families to focus on fire safety beyond fire prevention week. The videos covering fire extinguishers, exit drills, kitchen safety, home sleeping safety, and fire department equipment have been viewed over 750 times and remain available via YouTube for residents, schools, and businesses alike. The annual holiday tree lighting ceremony also took place, this time online. But while the lighting was virtual, I'm happy to report the tree ornaments were as real as ever. In an effort to find some normalcy in a super abnormal world, we once again took on the tradition of collecting ornaments for the holiday tree. Although we missed seeing everyone together, the community came through, like always, with great handmade ornaments, and the ornaments were showcased as part of a virtual tree lighting ceremony, which also provided an opportunity to promote Small Business Saturday in support of our local merchants. The village responded quickly and effectively to the financial challenges and uncertainty brought on by the pandemic. A COVID-19 financial response plan was created and shared with the community beginning in April. The plan included reducing operating expenses by $2 million, freezing hiring and reducing capital spending by suspending capital projects. The village pursued and received a $2.5 million CARES Act grant from the federal government that was distributed by DuPage County. And while we appreciate the efforts of elected representatives at the county, state, and federal level to secure match, much needed funding for local governments during these difficult times, it is important to remember that municipal government is the one on the hook when 911 is called, when the water main bursts, or like we've seen, the snow starts falling. 
If we suspend, reduce, or defer services, it's felt immediately by the members of our community. As the village monitored finances closely throughout the year and continues to do so, efforts from village employees across the organization led to savings that exceeded our early plan estimates, an effort for which we're all grateful. Recent updates to the response plan have provided additional good news. Stronger than expected retail sales through the summer and fall months have made 2020 less bad. Not great, but certainly less bad. Twenty twenty also brought a renewed focus on the challenges we face as a diverse nation, state, and community. In response to questions raised, the village offered community members an opportunity to ask questions and make comments at a public forum on policing in Downers Grove. The listening session focused on improving communication, enhancing the relationship, and furthering confidence and trust among our police department and the community they serve. The success of this engagement effort was made possible due to the expertise and cooperation of many local government partners and community members. For starters, the session was hosted by the Public Library in partnership with the Village at the Park District Rec Center. Moderations for the moderators for the session included Michael Childress, President of the DuPage County NAACP, and Joy Matson, an adult and teen services librarian. Active listeners included Downers Grove's village manager, David Fieldman, Chief of Police, Shannon Gillette, and School District 99 Superintendent, Hank Thiele. Special thanks too goes out to those at the Unity Partnership for their help in planning this event. During the summer, Downers Grove was the site of Say Their Names, one of the largest marches for justice and peace in the state led by several recent District 99 graduates and current students. The village helped facilitate a peaceful and safe exercising of First Amendment rights with no injuries, no arrests, and no damage to property. Whether for suffrage, for jobs and freedom, against the war in Vietnam, marches and peaceful demonstrations have a long and proud history of serving to raise awareness when change is needed. The village of Downers Grove remains committed to protecting First Amendment rights for all members of the public while also working to provide for everyone's health and safety. The pandemic did not prevent the village from advancing several important projects that will enhance our community. Key recommendations contained in the future of the downtown plan were implemented in 2020. These actions provide a future funding source for downtown investment and strengthen the partnership between Downtown Management Corporation and the village. These accomplishments were only possible as a result of time and effort from downtown business owners, property owners, and residents, and downtown management corporation team, all working in cooperation with one another. Downers Grove and the village as a whole will benefit for years to come from the work that was completed in 2020. The Human Service Ad Hoc Committee report was completed and received by the Village Council in December of 2020. The report contains 14 recommendations to the Council concerning the provision of social services in our community. In the coming months and as financial conditions allow, the Village will be developing a social services referral program, identifying gaps in the provision of social services, and creating a strategy to address them. The action plan also calls for the engagement of professional qualified staff to lead these efforts. Despite the COVID-driven delays, the Village wishes to offer thanks again to those residents who contributed to these recommendations, including Rebecca Campbell, Tom Connolly, Chris Gilmartin, Azizi Marshall, Kimberly Nagy, Stephanie Williams, and the Committee Chair, Samantha Aycock. In 2020, the Village launched WaterSmart software to offer residents a modem, a modern digital portal to access detailed information about their household water use. Your village government continues to embrace lean principles and works hard to find ways to improve services our businesses and residents expect. Not only does this system allow customers to view their usage, this free service enables water customers to check for leaks, set up alerts, and receive customized recommendations on how to save water and money. And importantly, implementing this new technology not only improves service, it also eliminated the need to hire a customer service representative. The Village and our partners at District 99 continue to enhance pedestrian safety at both high schools. The District 99 Pedestrian Safety Study was commissioned in 2019 to improve pedestrian safety in the areas surrounding North and South High Schools. The project was fueled by input from students, parents, residents, and stakeholders, and steered by a task force made up of Village and District 99 staff. 
Initial enhancements, including speed limit reductions and speed feedback signage, were immediately installed prior to the start of school in 2019. Somewhat stalled by the pandemic's impact on our board and commission meetings, as well as the heightened priority of COVID operations adjustments to both the schools and the village, things are moving again, and there are over 20 additional recommended safety improvements, including the installation of new traffic signals, sidewalks, and streetlights that are now underway. For over 30 years, the village's financial work has been recognized for its accuracy, transparency, and consistency by the Government Finance Officers Association. Once again, the village has received the Distinguished Budget Award and Certificate of Achievement for Excellence in Financial Reporting in the Comprehensive Annual Financial Report from the GFOA. The American Heart Association's Mission Lifeline EMS recognition is a program designed to showcase emergency medical service organizations across the nation for excellent heart attack care. The role of EMS in the system of care for these patients is crucial and often sets the course for the patient's outcome. For the second year in a row, our fire department was recognized by the American Heart Association with the Mission Lifeline EMS Gold Plus Achievement Award for successful collaboration with Good Samaritan Hospital in treating cardiac emergencies and strokes. The Downers Grove Fire Department is one of only seven departments in Illinois to be so recognized. And this is a true statement, true testament to the quality of care provided by the people that serve. The ability of your village to persevere amongst the many challenges of the past year is a direct result of a data-driven strategic planning and steadfast leadership over many, many years. The solid foundation on which services are delivered was laid long before COVID-19 became part of our vocabulary. The village has held S&P Global's AAA bond rating, the highest rating issued by the agency since 2013. The police department has been recognized with gold standard accreditation with excellence through the Commission on Accreditation for Law Enforcement Agencies, also known as CALEA, and the department has received the Meritus Award for achieving 15 or more consecutive years of accreditation. And our award-winning fire department continues with its ISO Class 1 rating. Taken together, a AAA bond rating, CALEA Gold Standard Policing, and ISO 1 Fire Protection, your village team is recognized for the professionalism and preparedness they demonstrate daily. For some perspective, of the nearly 1,300 municipalities in Illinois and 89,000 local governments in the United States, the village of Downers Grove is one of only a handful of municipalities across our nation to hold all three top honors. As we look forward, our message remains the same. The road through COVID continues to be long, crooked, and rough, and there's many more miles ahead. Vaccines will continue to come, hopefully at increasing rates, but the race between vaccinations and infections continues. The race between immunity and mutation is on. So please continue to choose to help. Practice the three W's religiously and make the best choices you can to minimize the spread of COVID-19. Together we can work towards a safe and healthy 2021. Thank you all for your time. Item five on our agenda tonight is the consent agenda. Is there a motion concerning tonight's consent agenda? Mayor, I move that the council adopt the consent agenda as presented. Second. Any questions or comments from the council? Rosa, would you please call the roll? Commissioner Jose? Aye. Commissioner Wallace? Aye. Commissioner Gray? Aye. Commissioner Colvaney? Aye. Commissioner Sadowski Fugit? Aye. Commissioner Earl? Aye. Mayor Barnett? Aye. That passes unanimously. Thank you all. Item six on our agenda is the active agenda. This is the portion of the meeting where we plan to take action on items previously discussed, previously debated at other council meetings. Is there a motion concerning landmark designation tonight? Mayor, I move that the council adopt a resolution granting historic landmark designation for 200 Shady Lane as presented. Second. Any questions or comments from the audience on this agenda item? Questions or comments from the council? Marge or Rich, you guys good? Yep, uh, really pleased to see this go through. I'm delighted as well to see this going forward. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Rosa, please call the roll. Commissioner Jose? Aye. Commissioner Wallace? Aye. Commissioner Gray? Aye. Commissioner Colavaney? Aye. Commissioner Sadowski-Fugit? 
Aye. Commissioner Earl? Aye. Mayor Barnett? Aye. Is there an ordinance concerning a plat of dedication? Mayor, I move that the council adopt an ordinance accepting dedication of the south half of Wisconsin Avenue between Belmont Road and Sterling North Park as presented. Second. Any questions from the council on this subject? Questions from the audience? Checking in with Marge and Rich. No mayor. No mayor. Rosa, please call the roll. Commissioner Jose? Aye. Commissioner Wallace? Aye. Commissioner Gray? Aye. Commissioner Colavaney? Aye. Commissioner Sadowski Fugit? Aye. Commissioner Earl? Aye. Mayor Barnett? Aye. That is the end of our active agenda. This takes us to the first reading portion of the meeting. Uh, this is typically reserved for items that we'll begin discussing as a group. Um, actions we would not normally take action on tonight. We do not have any on the list. However, Dave, I believe, has a report for us tonight. Well, we actually will start off with a discussion about outdoor dining under the first reading. It's actually a resolution, and background information on this item will be presented by a deputy village manager, Mike Baker. Thanks for pulling me out of the drink there, Dave. <laughs> Good evening, Mayor, members of the council. Uh, this item establishes outdoor dining rules for 2021. The outdoor dining program uh, would be available to restaurants throughout the village. Uh, it will allow outdoor dining areas to be expanded, similar to what occurred in 2020. And the village is working in close partnership with the Downtown Management Corporation to tailor this program to the downtown area. The Downtown Management Corporation Board unanimously supported the program at its most recent meeting, and the organization will be assisting the village in enhancing the aesthetic appearance of the um, overall uh, outdoor dining arrangements in the downtown. Aaron Benizia, Executive Director of the Downtown Management Corporation, is here this evening and can assist in responding to any questions you may have. Along with I can do that as well. <laughs> Turn it over to you, Mike. Thanks, Mike. Aaron, did you have anything you wanted to say? All right, well, thank you for being here, support of this, and thanks for working with Mike and, and the rest of the team. Thanks to everybody at Downtown Management. Any council comments or questions, concerns about it? No Nicole? concerns, Mayor. Just excited to see that this is um, establishing this program until mm -hmm. March of 2021. Um, we have seen, you know, restaurants have incredible negative effects from this pandemic. So I appreciate the cooperation with DMC. Uh, thank you to staff for all of your work. And I'm excited to uh, continue seeing this program move forward till 2021. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Certainly. Marge or Rich, you guys have any input or questions or comments about this one? Um, I concur with... Uh Nicole Wallace's comments. As do I. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, guys. Uh, just thanks again for everybody and, and downtown management. Thank you for your work as well. Um, we, we've seen this be a uh, not only an important thing for our restaurants, but I think in, in most ways something that our residents too have really benefited from and enjoyed. So if we can find a way to keep this kind of ball rolling forward, that's a good thing for everybody. Thanks a lot. Sure. Uh, one final comment in anticipation of approval on March 2nd, we will be begin reaching out to restaurants uh, this week to notify them of the opportunity to participate and make sure they have ample time to plan and prepare. Awesome. Thanks, Mike. Thank you. And that will end our first reading. And as we transition into the manager's report, I will add to our list of thank yous for the outdoor dining to the actual restaurant owners and operators. They've just been a joy to work with and some very stressful times. We thank them very much for their perseverance, continued investment and service in our community. And also to all the patrons, uh, the residents here in Downers Grove, that clearly offered their support throughout the pandemic um, and, and non-residents too, who came to our downtown and other dining areas uh, to support us. Thanks to everybody on a successful program. And Mayor, with that, I'll just jump right into the manager's report, which is a financial report. Uh, I do have an update to the financial report uh, that started as the COVID-19 pandemic uh, financial response plan way back in April of last year. 
Uh, the pandemic obviously has significantly negatively impacted many village revenue sources and has affected our expenses as well. Our goal as we respond to the pandemic is to be a sustainable and resilient village government. Our objectives are to continue to provide essential services during this crisis and well into the future. And we also need to continue to be financially prepared to respond to any other future emergency that we may incur. I want to jump right into the fiscal year 20 revenue performance. So uh, last year's revenue performance, we have almost all the numbers on the revenue side we're looking for. Uh, the sales tax and home rule sales tax, we have information through November, so we're still missing uh, one month. And this slide, which has been presented for months, shows the performance of four major revenue sources in our general fund. And at this point in 2019, those revenues generated, uh, fifth, uh, excuse me, $15.85 million uh, for that time frame through 2020, just over $14 million, a decline of nearly 11%. So here's a closer look at those revenue sources and how they performed in 2020. Uh, this graph shows sales tax revenues performance through November. The 2020 revenues are shown in red and the 2019 revenues are shown in gray. Through November, sales tax revenues are down about 5%. That's about $550,000. If you follow the lines on the graph, you'll see very poor performance in March and April, then very rapid recovery in May and June, and then a three-month stretch that was really not expected at all. July, August, and September 2020 performed better than the previous year, as was mentioned in the Mayor's Annual Report. October and November performance was down compared to 2019, but certainly much better than it could have been given the circumstances. A uh, December figure should be uh, provided to us in about 30 days. On the home rule sales tax, uh, same graph approach here, through November, home rule sales tax were down by 11%, or over $190,000. Graph shows very poor, for, very poor performance in March and April, and then moderate recovery in May and June, although not as strong as sales tax. July, August, and September, performed well. October and November dropped off a little bit again, but still not as bad as it uh, could have been given the circumstances that we were dealing with uh, in the fourth quarter. Food and beverage tax revenues. Now this information is for the complete year of 2020. Uh, again, you can see the V-shaped graph with sharply declining revenues in March and April, and then strong recovery May and June. Uh, from July through September, revenue continued to improve and leveled off, and performance in the fourth quarter was significantly below that of the performance in uh, 2019 in that same quarter. For the year, food and beverage tax revenue was down by $330,000, about a 17% decline. Hotel tax. Uh, as the mayor mentioned in his annual report, the hospitality industry was hit uh, very hard in the uh, pandemic and continues uh, to struggle in many areas. Hotel tax revenues for 2020 were down by nearly 65%. That's about a $625,000 shortfall. Performance hit a low point in April and then recovered only slightly for the balance of the year. You can see the performance then. As we close out 2020, staff has prepared and updated the year-end estimates on both the revenue side and the expense side. Here's a quick summary. Our best estimate for 2020 revenues in the general fund is that they were down by 1.7 million, down 1.7. Expenses were cut by $2 million. Let's pause here and offer a big thank you to every one of our staff members for their commitment to cost control and a shared vision of being great stewards of taxpayer money throughout this pandemic. So expenses were cut by $2 million. 
Then the village received a two and a half million dollar CARES Act grant, as Mayor Barnett mentioned. This is all great news, relatively, what we started off the year and the pandemic thinking. In summary, our COVID-19 financial response plan worked. While total general fund revenues were off by $1.7 million, almost all revenues performed better than the year-end estimate that we presented at the budget time around August. This slide shows revenue performance compared to our August estimate. Those are all plus signs. So really, the second half of the year performed much better than we were expected uh, when we gave the estimate in August. So with that uh, good news, better than expected news, we like to look forward. First, how should we close out 2020? Well, staff is recommending that we move an amount just above the CARES Act grant amount, move that to our major buildings fund, where that money would be available for use in the general fund in this year, 2021, as is uh, noted in our 21 budget. And if that money, to the extent it is not needed in 21, it will be available for our pending future facilities project. As we continue to go through 2021, we will monitor revenue performance and expenses and report it out. If revenue performance continues to perform better than we expect, better than the budget, we should consider filling the vacant positions that are now left vacant as part of our budgeting process, perhaps a few months earlier than we originally anticipated. The target decision date for this action is mid-April. So we'll give you a couple more reports and then by April we should have some information about January sales tax and that will be a good time for us to consider uh, changes to our budget as we discuss through the budgeting process. I want to thank the council for uh, your attention and diligence and uh, leading us in uh, monitoring revenues and adjusting our budgets as needed. We're happy to answer any questions that the council may have. Thank you, Dave. And, and thank you to the whole team uh, for not only this report, but the, really the work behind it. Any council questions or comments on this update? Greg? Thank you, Mayor. Um, I just want to say thank you to staff for the continued reports on this. Um, obviously, there's a lot of data to go through, and uh, the picture is uh, better than originally anticipated. And I think that's a testament uh, to our business owners and our residents in Downers Grove. They're you know, obviously committed to making their way through the, this pandemic. And folks have focused on local businesses and really tried to help them out. And I think that's just uh, fantastic. And I think the numbers bear that out. Um, I look forward to continuing to uh, invest in the community, whether it's uh, infrastructure, uh, filling these positions that have gone vacant for uh, a year plus in some cases. Uh, and um, you know, continuing down the road of some of the, the new priorities that we've set, uh, including uh, social services. So I, um, I, the, uh, the news is, is good. I'm glad to hear it, and I hope it continues to improve. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Greg. Kevin. Uh, thank you, Mayor. I just wanted to say there are certain um, images, or certain numbers, and things that stand out in this role. And I think when we started down this journey in 2020, the number that stands out that I rem first remember seeing, that we all remember seeing, was a number that read something like a 20 point something million dollar deficit, just a cursory first glance. And I remember how heavy that number hit and how diligently over the past year, the staff as well as the commissioners and the mayor, how from week to week everyone worked together. What a lot of you see that may be looking at us at, at home or in person see is this week to week thing, but no one ever really sees what goes on behind the curtain. And so to be a part of this past year, difficult, absolutely, but it, I think it's just a testament to when people want to get things done, what is possible. And so I thank the village, Dave, Mayor and Commissioners, thank you all. Uh, this was a monumental task. One else? Rich, Marge? Marge, you want to go yes, first? I, yes, I will go first. Thank you, Rich. Um, 
thank you so much, so much to staff. Um, this has been a, a terribly difficult year for everyone. And without the continued leadership of our staff and our mayor and um, everyone all together working as a team, not just as, a per as one person looking out for themselves, we wouldn't be in such great, dare I say it, great, um, or at least good financial shape. And um, I, I just sincerely from the bottom of my heart want to thank everyone for doing their part and, and um, staying strong and um, keeping their heads up and, um, and looking out for everyone in this town as a whole and trying to keep the burden, burdens on everyone as minimal as possible. So um, that's all I have. Mayor, thank you so much. Thank you, Marge. Rich? I'll uh, keep my comments brief. So first I'd like to uh, thank and congratulate uh, leadership, senior leadership and uh, staff for your fine performance in uh, just digging in together, sharing the load, taking a bit of a sacrifice so that we could get through this awful period of time. It's uh, also gratifying to see how Downers Grove residents have uh, supported local businesses, especially uh, the restaurants because of the food and beverage uh, tax. So I think everyone uh, shared this load and did what they were supposed to do and really lessened the blow. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Rich. Leslie, go ahead. Yeah, in addition to everything all of my colleagues said, um, I'm just particularly proud of staff, council, and residents. I feel as though our community stood together in a way that many haven't. We are all up here wearing masks and have been um, from our YouTube videos about you know staying home and staying safe to reminding people of all of the, all of the public health directives at the end of every meeting. We really have come together as a community all towards one goal, putting aside any disagreements we might have had um, with regard to everything else. So I think it's a testament to the quality of our staff, the unity up here, and the recognition of, of everyone that there is something bigger than just um, our personal beliefs or goals and knowing that we are truly taking care of the community. So I just wanted to thank all the mayor and council staff and all of the res residents in the community who have been a part of this. Um, I'm, I'm truly proud and I regularly brag about uh, the way that Downers Grove has handled this pandemic. So thanks. Thank you. Want to jump in? I'll jump in. I'll be brief. I just want to reiterate that the news that we got this evening is positive. And I don't think anyone was necessarily expecting positive news to come. Um, I feel like quickly. Um, so again, thank you to staff for coming up with a plan that worked. Thank you to everyone in our community for coming together. We truly do live in one of the best communities in the state, if not in the nation. I'm a firm believer of that. Um, we, we know when it's time to come together and that's what this community does. So thank you to all the residents, staff, to my team on council. There's no way that we could have gotten this done. Uh, if we didn't all work well together up here. So thank you to everyone involved. Thanks, Mayor. Thank you. Thank you, Dave. Thank you. That ends uh, the manager's report tonight and the first reading. Thanks, Mayor. We uh, have moved public comments to the end of our meetings for some time now in an effort to try and allow for comments to come in through the course of the meeting electronically. So I'll just check in with Mr. Baker. Anything come in? No, Mayor. No, 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 no. All right. Thank you for checking. Uh, item 10 on our agenda, council member reports. This is an opportunity for council members to weigh in on things that are on their mind, other goings on in the community or groups they're associated with. Um, we'll just run down the list here and I'm gonna start on my left with Kavanaugh. All right, uh, thank you, Mayor. We are concluding, uh, this is the final time in the month that we will be here during Black History Month. And so uh, this is something that I, I latch on to as someone that's a fan of history in general, um, that I've kind of made it a point to 
speak on, whether it be for my own personal, whether it be for individuals that you come in contact that are really interested in finding, uh, finding out more about someone else's history, which is actually a part of their history, and even for the individuals who get tired of hearing about uh, Black History Month maybe the third day in. And so I'm, I'm, here, for, I'm here for everyone, uh, a little something for everyone. There is, is a note that I keep in, uh, in my phone when I go to museums. One of the things that I hate missing uh, about hate that I really hate about during the season that we're in of COVID is the cultural things. And a couple of weeks ago, a lot of you may have heard this already, but a couple of weeks ago I came across the note from uh, the African American Museum when my family and I attended, uh, took a road trip a couple of years back. And one of the, the areas that stood out to me the most was this economy of slavery. And the reason why it struck a chord with me primarily was simply because I have a ton of books related to entrepreneurs, how they got started, how they made their wealth. Some of my favorites are Richard Branson, how he dropped out of school and, and built up Virgin Records and signed the Stones and Janet Jackson and all these other people. So these great stories, but two of the stories that are, are really of interest to me on my bookshelf are the Rockefellers and the, the Carnegies, how they built their wealth uh, but more importantly, how they held on to their wealth and how they passed that wealth down. This Economy of Slavery exhibit at the National Museum of Af African American History threw out a number that every so often I come across because it's mind boggling. And it is that in 1832, the value of cotton that was produced by slaves was estimated at $29.37 million. And there was something about looking at that number from a historical prism that didn't sit well with me. And so as a finance major, I took out my phone and I started punching numbers and I started looking at uh, rates and what that time value of money would look like. And so $100 invested in 1832, given the time value of money, would be worth about $3,000 today. If you took the value of $29.37 million the value of the cotton produced in that one year alone and applied that same standard of time value of money, that $29.37 million in 1832 would be worth $88,954,974,000 today. Wealth generated by individuals, the toil of slaves, something that their descendants would never, will never ever see. But the thing that got me about that particular number, that $88.9 billion number, is that in order to get a true depiction of what that really looks like, you would have to take that $88.5 billion that their descendants would never see, and you would have to multiply that number by 400 years. 400 years of generational wealth that generations have never benefited from or have never seen it or will never see. That number to me is almost incomprehensible. It's staggering. Even as I read through it again now, rattling around that number in my head, I didn't even do the calculation. I didn't want to see it. But there's something about that concept, $88.9 billion multiplied by hundreds of years is a staggering thought. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Marge? Thank you, Mayor. Um, just briefly, I want to thank Commissioner Gray for sharing his experiences with us at our last meeting. I truly was humbled into silence um, and want to thank you for reminding us that walking a mile in someone else's shoes is really only the beginning of understanding them and where they come from. So, um, and in recognition of Black History Month, um, thank you for all of the information you have brought to us. And um, I will continue to ponder and try harder to understand um, your point of view and where you're coming from. And um, that's all I have for tonight. Thank you, Mayor. Thanks, Marge. Greg? Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I, too, want to thank Commissioner Gray for uh, 
um, in particular this uh, this last piece. Um, it's it's a mind-boggling number, and uh, it's something we always do well to think about and reflect on. Thank you, Mary. Thanks, Greg. Leslie. Yes. Uh, first, I really just want to thank Public Works for the excellent job that they've done over this last week because holy moly have we gotten a lot of snow. And uh, I cannot even fathom how quickly they were able to get all of this done. So we were shoveling our driveway at about 6.30 this morning and I feel like our road already looked excellent. So first, thanks so much. Um, second, I, I just want to echo um, thank you to Commissioner Gray sharing um, all of your experiences. I know in our 2020 uh, reflection, we mentioned the Unity Partnership. I know that we had a, a quick meeting with them when we launched the listening session. Um, and I know they want to commit to further ongoing action. And I really hope we choose to re-engage them and um, continue the work that we started last year. Um, I was lucky enough to meet Regina and Paul from the Unity Partnership over the weekend. And um, I'm just really impressed by their whole organization. So thanks to that. And I'm also thrilled for the return of human services in the coming months. So there's a lot of good things to reflect on from 2020. And I just hope we continue the path forward, especially as we continue to celebrate Black History Month. That's all I have. Thank you. Cool. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I would also like to thank Commissioner Gray. I hope this doesn't seem disingenuous. <laughs> I'm the last one to go. I'm so <laughs> sorry. But truly, um, what you shared tonight, uh, you shared on so social media. And um, mm -hmm. it fit right in with what I'm teaching in my American history class right now. And so I said to Commissioner Gray, like, I hope you don't mind, I'm gonna use this in class. I loved it. It was such great numbers and really um, uh, makes you think and, and uh, it, it kind of hit a reality to a lot of my students. So thank you so much for that. Um, also a, a comment, um, the most beautiful sound that I have heard in quite some time <laughs> is the voice of Commissioner Colvini. Um, seriously, every time he said I tonight, my heart fluttered a little bit. Um, and I hear, that might sound weird, but I hear a lot of sounds being a hybrid teacher. Um, technological <laughs> sounds, sounds from children's homes. So truly, truly one of the most beautiful sounds I've heard in quite some time. So um, welcome back, Commissioner Colvini. You have been incredibly missed. Um, and we truly, I, I said it tonight, but I will say it again, we truly are a team up here. And when one person, just one person, is gone, um, it's, it's disjointed and it doesn't feel the same. So um, I appreciate that uh, we're all back together, even though it's part remote, part in person, uh, but good to have you back. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Rich, how's that for a setup? <laughs> well, it's uh, hard to match a, uh, an introduction like that. So uh, I'm going to make my comments about COVID. It's uh, a lot more personal to me. I'm uh, I'm still on a trach machine, but it's only being used for to provide oxygen to me. And because of the new technology, it sounds a lot more like my own voice versus a mechanical voice. I'm fairly certain I know who uh, gave this to me. It's an individual came to the store and he uh, handed me a card that said he had a medical excuse to not wear a mask so i tried to take care of him the best i could and i was with him for a pretty lengthy period of time and as it turned out he kept on getting closer to closer to me so he could see the computer so that was the only person that came within six feet for over like five minutes of of time and so what i'd like to say about this disease i know it hits different people differently um, the only underlying condition I have is uh, high blood pressure. and uh, I guess over 60% of people in this country have that uh, underlying uh, condition. But uh, this thing is insidious. It's relentless. It uh, comes in very much like waves. And when you're at a, a low point and you think you're out of the woods, the next wave comes in and slams you against uh, the rocks. So. Um, sure that person felt um, he or she was uh, exercising their personal rights when uh, I went to urgent care and told them the situation. The, the doctor said that other than some psychological reasons, there's no medical necessity uh, not to wear a mask. So if that person would have been more thoughtful, uh, just a little bit more thoughtful 
of others. Um, it wouldn't have put me in the hospital for uh, 67 days and counting. So uh, just be more considerate. Uh, thing, thing is real. I did uh, on Christmas Day when this should have been a joyous time for my family. Um, and by the way, five members of my family caught it from me, which is really disconcerting to me. And then they had uh, to deal with uh, Christmas Day, me being transferred to the uh, ICU at the Baritone, and they switched me from serious condition to critical condition. And the, uh, the doctor told my wife that I was knocking on heaven's door. So it only takes a little bit of consideration, uh, but it could save a lot of suffering uh, for a lot of people. You know, I was doing the things I was supposed to do. It, I guess I got caught up in my work to help the guy out and uh, end up paying the price for it. And uh, thank you for your kind words, uh, Commissioner Wallace. I really appreciate it. Thanks, Rich. I hope through tonight's meeting, whether it's the look back at 2020 or Dave's financial update or the, the comments from, from my colleagues um, through the course of the meeting and here at the end, I hope what is taken away by our community is, is that we are trying to, and I think successfully, we're trying to model the behavior and the actions that we think reflect the values of our community. That's what we do up here. And we don't always get it exactly right, but we try really hard to do it. And I think there's a lot of evidence to suggest that, that that's exactly why we're hearing a little bit of good news tonight. Um, this council and this staff are mirrors to the community. And our community dug in. You heard Dave talk about it. You've heard each of, our, each of my colleagues up here talk about it. Our community dug in. Our businesses dug in. Our residents dug in. We doubled down on ourselves. Um, we took the, the precautions that were needed and then reached out to each other, um, whether that was, you know, electronically or it was you know, engaging local businesses or it was trying to keep each other up and remind each other about what the right choices are, like, like Rich was talking about. Um, if we continue to do that, we will be fine as a community. That's what we need to do. And, and I am super thankful. Um, it's a little hard to weave it into a 2020 report, you know, with a bunch of, <laughs> with a deck of slides. But I am super thankful for everybody in the community, for our staff, uh, and for my colleagues. Um, this is not a year that anybody would have chosen or wished for, and yet here we are, um, all seven of us, <laughs> still talking about what good work we can do going forward for our community. I think, it's a, I think what we've been is a good mirror to the community, and, and uh, the community has responded in ways that we would all hope. So I'm, I'm excited about 2021, looking forward to moving on. Uh, and would wrap the meeting up, but we're not going to do that right now. We, we need a motion for an executive session. Mayor, I move to convene in the closed session pursuant to Section 2C2 of the Illinois Open Meetings Act to consider collective negotiating matters between the village and its employees or their representatives. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Good night, folks. We are adjourning to executive closed session. Thank you all for being with us. <laughs>